very important, especially not every teaching leads to successful learning. Sometimes there is much teaching, but with a little learning. And other times there is much teaching, but unfortunately without having any learning. So it is very important to try contemporary strategies of teaching English as a foreign language. In Jordan and elsewhere, we teach English language traditionally. We teach English language conventionally. Accordingly, the English language specialists should look for contemporary strategies that lead to successful learning. So in this research, in this paper, we investigate the effect of using phonetic and phonological awareness on EFL students' prosodic or paralinguistic competence. My colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I want to, to tell you, or I guarantee you, that the oral message represents only 40% of communication. In any act of communication, between a speaker and a listener, between an addresser or, and an addressee, between a reader and a writer, there is a message, but having a message is not enough. Besides the message, there should be a code. What do I mean by the code? Is the socio-cultural experience that makes the addressee understand the addresser. So this is... In this research, in this study, we investigate the effect of using phonetic and phonological awareness on EFL students' prosodic competence. So the oral message alone is not enough. Besides the oral message, we should make use of the body language, the facial expressions, the eye contact message, and the musicality of the throat. Without taking the musicality of the throat, a kind of misunderstanding or misconception might occur. So in this study, we want to investigate the importance of communicating fluently and effectively, the importance of using English with its pronunciation, the importance of using English with its, with its prosodic aspects, the importance of you speaking English with its proper intonation, because the intonation, word stress, sentence stress, and the musicality of the message it plays a role in deciding the intended meaning in the mind or in the heart of the speaker. So me and my colleague, Amin Al-Azam, throughout this study, investigated the effect of phonetic and phonological awareness on EFL student, English language students' prosodic or paralinguistic competence. So in this study, we have two groups, control group and experimental group. The control group was taught conventionally or regularly, whereas the experimentalist group was taught by using phonetic and phonological uh, information. Because I strongly believe as a foreign language student, teacher, supervisor, curricular designer, textbook writer, and teacher for BA, MA, and BAG students, I strongly believe in the idea that theories have no value unless they are in, uh, converted into practice. And the practice has no value unless it is based on theories. So, if you want to give this, your students a chance to acquire English language efficiently and effectively, they should have in advance phonetic and phonological information about the rules of a pronunciation and the rules of intonation, the rules of word stress, the rules of sentence stress. So the experimentalist group was exposed to English but this exposure is accompanied with teaching them the phonological and the phonetic rules of a pronunciation, of intonation, of rhyme, of rhythm, of pause, of juncture, of word stress, and of sentence stress. And before the experiment, both groups sat to a pre 
to decide the actual level of the students before the experiment. And my student, my colleagues, I want to talk first of all about the problem of the study. What is the problem of the study? The problem of the study is that our students in Jordan and elsewhere, they speak English, but with their native pronunciation, with their native accent, and they cannot use the rules of intonation, rhyme, rhythm, pose, juncture, word distress, and sentence stress properly. Therefore, this affects the meaning of the message, and this affects the effectiveness of communication. So the most important thing in speaking is to create a code with the addressee or with the listener. So to enable students to create a code, we should look for contemporary strategies that make teaching English language efficient and effective. So after talking about the statement of the problem, I will talk in a brief about the purpose of the study. What is the purpose of the study? The purpose of the study is to investigate the effect of phonetic and phonological information or rules that are given to students and the effect of these phonetic and phonological rules on a student's understanding or student's acquisition of the prosodic or paralinguistic aspects of language. After that, I will talk about, after that, about the procedures of the study. What are the procedures of my, our study? The procedures, we selected two groups and these two groups were purposefully chosen for logistic purposes. And after that, these both groups were taught, uh, the experimental group was taught convention, uh, the, by using phonetic and phonological information, whereas the experimental group was taught by using a, a phonetic and phonological information, whereas the control group was taught regularly. And before the experiment, they sat to a pretest in order to decide if these groups have the same level of a prosodic competence or of paralinguistic competence before starting the experiment to look for the equivalence of both groups. After teaching them, they were taught by the same teacher. The experimental group was taught uh, uh, by the teacher using phonetic and phonological information. And the control group was taught regularly. After starting the experiment, after eight weeks, both groups sat to a post-test to see, did change occur? If it occurred, to what extent and in what dimension? After teaching them for eight weeks, they sat to a post-test and the researchers found out that the, there was a kind of change in their paralinguistic competence or in their prosodic competence. And the change was in favor of the experimental group that was taught by using phonetic and phonological information that facilitates language acquisition or the acquisition of the paralinguistic aspects of language. Yes, after these procedures, I would like to talk about the findings of the two questions. Yes, uh, after these procedures, I would like to uh, uh, talk about the findings of the study. And then my colleagues will talk about the uh, summary of the findings and the conclusion and the recommendation. The findings of the study, uh, the researchers found out that the experimental group students developed more in the uh, pro paralinguistic and the prosodic aspects of language. And this might be due to the fact that phonetic and phonological information or knowledge facilitated the acquisition of the paralinguistic aspects of language. I thank you. Now, I leave the floor to my colleague, uh, Mr. Amin Al-Azam, and after that, we are ready for questions. Thank you very much. Amin. 
Yes, Amin. Good morning, and uh, thank you, my, my colleague. Um, uh, and I'd like to thank you all for this uh, great conference. Uh, at this moment, I'd like to present uh, uh, what Professor Ahmed uh, presented to sum up what uh, uh, he presented. Uh, phonological awareness strategy can be regarded as uh, effective for developing 11th grade students paralinguistic competence. Uh, the experimental group uh, students performance was better than the control group in the paralinguistic competence because of uh, phonological awareness. The conclusion of this study, it might be concluded that phonological awareness is very important in teaching paralinguistic competence. The findings of the study from theoretical and empirical points of view suggested that phonological awareness strategy had a, posit a positive effect enhancing and developing the AFL learners paralinguistic competence. The following conclusion might be taken from this study. Phonological awareness was a beneficial strategy for teaching and learning paralinguistic competence. Phonological awareness should be used in teaching the aspects of paralinguistic competence. And finally, we move to the recommendations. Curricula designers should build curricula in a way that encourages using the phonological awareness strategy in language teaching. More studies should be conducted on the effect of phonological awareness on language competences, language skills, and mechanics. This strategy should be applied on other language skills. Thank you very much, and we will come to your questions. Oh, well, the presenters are now open for uh, any questions from the audience side. So if there is any question, please ask them. Ariana exhaustive study, and it is the need of the hour as the younger generations are very much distracted by the influence of media. My query is that, uh, will you advocate the study to the youngest students, like students of primary education? Because the phonological awareness should be created at the earlier ages for the betterment of their language. Great. Well. Uh, it, really, it is a very great question. And you are right. Because the earlier, the better. I encourage applying this experiment on a, 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 a brief, uh, on the uh, kindergarten students or on the students in the primary stage on the, or in the lower basic stage. Because in the theories of first language acquisition and second language acquisition, if you want to give your students a chance to acquire English language efficiently and effectively, you should focus on the best period of first language or of second language learning or acquisition that starts from the age of four until the age of 12. So you are very right. And uh, in the future, inshallah, we will conduct another study in order to investigate the effectiveness or the effect of using this strategy, phonetic and phonological awareness, on the fourth grade or in the second grade EFL students. Thank you very much for this question. Thank you.